Welcome to lecture 11 on prime factors and greatest common divisor, section 2.4 of the text Elements of Modern Algebra by Gilbert and Gilbert. This is Dr. Gilbert Iyabi. In lecture 10, we introduce the concept of divisibility. We say that a non-zero integer A divides another integer B if there exists an integer K such that B equals A times K. In this lecture, we would introduce the concept of GCD, the greatest common divisor, and also state the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Section 2.4 prime factors, and the greatest common divisor, GCD. Subsection 2.4.1 definition. We say that the integer D is the greatest common divisor of the two integers A and B if the following conditions are satisfied. Number one, the integer D is positive. Number two, D divides A and D divides B. And three, if C divides A and C divides B, then we expect C to also divide D. Now let's break that down a little bit further. And let's start off with notation. If D is the GCD of two integers A and B, then we would use this notation to represent the GCD of A and B, which is D, or we may actually write it out explicitly as D equals GCD A and B. So from the definition above, this is what we have. D is the GCD of A and B if and only if the following three conditions are satisfied. Number one, D is strictly bigger than zero. It is a positive integer. Number two, D divides A and D divides B. And number three, if there exists an integer C such that C divides A and C divides B, then we would expect C to also divide D. It is very important to remember these three conditions that must be satisfied before we can conclude that an integer D is the GCD of the two integers A and B, i.e., if you are asked to prove that the GCD of two numbers is a particular number D, you have to verify that all three hold before you can conclude that indeed the GCD of the two integers given is in fact D. For example, is the GCD of 12 and 20 2? We check all three. Of course, we will not ask you questions like this. I just want to show you how to verify all three. 2 is bigger than 0. Very good. Satisfies condition 1. That says the GCD must be bigger than 0. 2 divides 12 and 2 divides 20. And that is good. It satisfies condition 2. D divides A and D divides B. Condition 3 says if there exists an integer C that divides both A and B, then C has to also divide D. Well, we find the integer 4. It divides 12 and divides 20, but does not divide 2. So we conclude that 2 is not the GCD of 12 and 20. Now, what are the kind of problems that you would actually see in this section? Problems like this. If A is defined as B, C plus 1, I want you to prove that the GCD of A and B is 1. So see if you can verify all the three properties mentioned above. I will leave this as a simple exercise for serious students. Later on in the lecture, I will show you how to prove 
that the GCD of two numbers is one without necessarily going through all the three points mentioned above. In fact, that would be the next theorem. Let A and B be integers where at least one of them is not zero. Then there exists a unique greatest common divisor D of A and B. Number two, moreover, I can write D as a linear combination of A and B, i.e. I can write D as AM plus BN for integers M and N. And the interesting part is D is the smallest positive integer that can be written in this form. This last statement is actually very important in this theorem. If I can write an integer as a linear combination of A and B, then automatically that integer D is a candidate for the GCD of A and B. It is not yet confirmed as the GCD. It is just a candidate for the GCD of A and B. If I can further verify that indeed, that D is the smallest positive integer that can be written as a linear combination of A and B, then I can now confirm that that D, in fact, is the GCD. In other words, if you want to prove that the GCD of A and B is 1, all you have to do is write 1 as a linear combination of A and B. And that does it because 1 is the least positive integer. Proof. I am going to leave this proof as a simple reading exercise for serious students. See page 90 and page 91 of your text, Elements of Modern Algebra by Gilbert and Gilbert. The proof is very easy to understand. Remark, I want you to pay very close attention to the summary that I'm going to put forward using what we've just seen above. Putting this theorem together with the definition of the GCD of A and B, we come up with the following summary. Let A and B be integers with at least one of them not zero. If D is the GCD of A and B, then these five things automatically hold. Number one, D is strictly bigger than zero. It's a positive integer. D divides A and D divides B. If I can find an integer C that divides A and also divides B, then that integer would also divide D. And four, there exist integers M and N such that D equals AM plus BN, i.e. D can be written as a linear combination of M and N, and it is, in fact, the least or the smallest positive integer that can be written in that form. I have start point number two and point number four, and I call them VIP, or very important property. Very important property. These two will help you solve almost all problems involving GCD. If you are told that D is the GCD of A and B, Quickly write down what that means. It means that D divides A and D divides B, i.e. A equals DK1, B equals DK2 for some K1, K2 in Z. And also write this down. There exists MN in Z such that D equals AM plus BN. Those three equations would help you solve almost all problems involving the GCD of A and B. Subsection 2.4.3, the Euclidean algorithm. We have seen that if the GCD of A and B is D, 
then there exists integers m and n such that d can be written as a linear combination of a and b. We can write d as a m plus b n. Question 1. How do we find the GCD d? Question 2. If we succeed to get a GCD d, how do we find integers m and n such that d equals a m plus b n? Answer, the Euclidean algorithm. This algorithm will help us find d and at the same time give us m and n. The Euclidean algorithm is simply a repeated application of the division algorithm with b strictly greater than 0. We defined that in lecture 10. For integers a and b with b bigger than 0, I can write a as a equals bq plus r, where r is bigger than or equal to 0 and strictly less than B. That is the division algorithm. When we apply that algorithm repeatedly, we call it the Euclidean algorithm. So let's start. We have integers a and b. a is bigger than b and b is greater than 0. By the division algorithm, we can write a as a equals b q0 plus r1. And R1 is going to be greater than or equal to 0 and strictly less than B. Now, recall from kindergarten math that A is the dividend, B is the divisor, Q0 is the quotient, and R1 is the remainder. We proceed and we make B the dividend, and that gives us R1, Q1 plus R2. R2 greater than or equal to 0, strictly less than R1. And we continue in that way until we arrive at RK equals RK plus 1, QK plus 1 plus RK plus 2, where RK plus 2 is bigger than or equal to 0 and strictly less than RK plus 1. The last non-zero remainder is the GCD of A and B. This is known as the Euclidean algorithm. The last non-zero remainder is our GCD. And I want you to watch how the dividends change from A to B to R1 and so on and so forth. Once we have our last non-zero remainder D, which is the GCD of A and B, we solve this simple linear equation for D and substitute in the values of R right up to the very first equation, and that would give us the required values for M and N. The quickest way to get you understand this is to show you an example. So follow me very carefully as we find the GCD D and integers M and N such that D equals A M plus B N. Example, find the GCD of 1492 and 1776 and express it as a linear combination of A and B for some integers M, N. Solution. We are going to use Euclidean algorithm, which is simply repeatedly doing division algorithm. This is our A, that is our B. So 1776 equals 1492 times 1 plus 284. That is our quotient, Q0, and this is our remainder, R1. This is bigger than or equal to 0 and less than B, so we're good. Step 2, our divisor now becomes the dividend, and our remainder now becomes the divisor. 
1492 equals 284 times 5 plus 72. Next step, our divisor now become the dividend, our remainder now become the divisor. 284 equals 72 times 3 plus 68. We continue until we meet a zero remainder. Our divisor now becomes the dividend and our remainder now becomes the divisor. 72 equals 68 times 1 plus 4. The remainder is not zero, so we continue. Again, our divisor becomes the dividend and our remainder becomes the divisor. 68 equals 4 times 17 plus 0. We have a 0 remainder. We go one step backward and the last non-zero remainder is our GCD. So the GCD of 1776 and 1492 is 4. We have solved one part of the puzzle and we have to solve the other part. Find M and N such that D equals AM plus BN. Now we said that to solve the second part of the puzzle, we start with solving this linear equation for our GCD4. Now I want you to watch the procedure very, very carefully. Solving this linear equation, we have 4 equals 72 plus 68 times negative 1. Basically, it would have been 4 equals 72 minus 68. Of course, you may want to ask me, why do I choose to write it in this form? Remember that I did say that we are going to be substituting the remainders. So we do not joke, we do not mess up, we do not change the remainders. 68, 72, 284 are very important to us. So we leave them exactly as they are. And you shall see how I will do that following this procedure. 4 equals 72 plus 68 times negative 1. The first remainder to substitute would be 68. Observe that 68 equals 284 plus 72 times negative 3. Again, elementary school mathematics, move 72 times 3 to the left hand side. It should have been 268 minus 72 times 3. But like I said, we are not messing around with any of our remainders. So 68 becomes 284 plus 72 times negative 3, right here. So 68 becomes 284 plus 72 times negative 3, and do not forget that there was a negative 1 hanging out here. I go ahead and use my right distributivity, and that gives me 72 plus 284 times negative 1, plus 72 times negative 1 times negative 3 is 3. I do not mess around with my remainders. I leave them exactly as they are. Now, 72 plus 72 times 3 is 72 times 4. It's like 1 banana plus 3 bananas is 4 bananas. Okay, that's easy. 72 times 4 plus 284 times negative 1. What is the next remainder we are interested in? 72. Just move 284 times 5 to the left hand side. So 72 becomes 1492 plus 284 times negative 5. And all of these is multiplied by this 4 that is hanging out here. Plus, of course, your 284 times negative 1. Right distributivity gives us 1492 times 4 
plus 284, negative 5 times 4 is negative 20, negative 20, and negative 1 will give us negative 21. The next remainder to take care of would be 284, and that is the last one. Again, observe that 284 would be 1776 plus 1492 times negative 1. So 284 is replaced by 1776 plus 1492 times negative 1. All of this is multiplied by negative 21 hanging out here. And of course, we have our first term, which is 1492 times 4. Write distributivity again. That would give us 1776 times negative 21 plus 1492 negative 1 times negative 21 would be 21 plus 4 is 25. So that gives us 1776 times negative 21 plus 1492 times 25. What have I done effectively? I have written 4 as a linear combination of A and B where my M is negative 21 and my N is 25. Thank you very much. We would continue from subsection 2.4.4 in lecture 12. Thank you and God bless you.